Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about today is how we transition in from what, we, what we've been talking about with the Roaring Twenties into the Great Depression. <clears throat> There's going to be a number of things that are going to happen that are going to affect America in a really negative situation. Number one, we're going to talk about how America goes from this picture that you've already seen in terms of during the Roaring Twenties in really what becomes a matter of a couple months from a really good situation um, to a situation like this where you have people lining up for free coffee and donuts and um, for the unemployed and you can see that line's pretty long so you're gonna have a, a drastic change from a really good time period uh, during the 1920s into um, a really negative period from about 19 um, 1929 until the end of the Second World War. So here's the, our main idea: is basically how how do we, what happens in America f for that prosperity of the 1920s to end and become so such a bad situation for Americans. Um, why it really matters is it's really going to have a lasting effect of everything else we're going to talk about as we go down down the rest of American history from the 1920s on. Um, it's going to change the way it really affects Americans that were raised during that time period and it's going to really change the way our government um, deals with situations like uh, the Great Depression as we move forward. Lots of keys, key terms and names we're going to talk about. So as we're um, as you're jotting those down we're, we're going to, for today we're going to talk a little bit about the first uh, four or five of those key terms and we're going to work our way through the rest as we go through the rest of the chapter. Okay, so here's what happens. Um, during the 1920s, like, we, like we've been talking about, America saw a pretty good time of prosperity, but up into the crash, the stock market crash of 1929, um, for the most part, the Great Depression um, that follows it's going to be really, really hard on America for a long period of time. We really aren't going to recover from the great the stock market crash of 1929 until really um, World War, the beginning of World War II in the 1940s. So you have a long period of time where it's going to be pretty ugly for Americans. So the big the big problems that we're going to talk about is um, as follows. There's a there's a big gap between rich and poor. And that gap's getting bigger as the Roaring Twenties moves on. Um, you have really important industries that we're going to talk about that are struggling really bad. Farmers are growing more crops than they could raise, or basically than, than they could sell. And there's more livestock than they can sell for a profit. So you have this extra crops and livestock that's not being sold. And during the Roaring Twenties, there's a big push for buying on credit, where you could go out and you could get that car that you always wanted and buy make it make payments. The problem is is that that people were buying outside of their means and not being able to um to pay off their debts. So that's going to be one of those things that's going to be ugly. And the last one is going to be that production um is going to be a lot faster than than workers wages are going to grow. So you have lots of production happening. But with wages staying pretty low, the people in America were not really able to buy those products because they uh, were not seeing extra money coming into their pockets. So here's uh, one of the important vocabs is that idea of buying on credit. Most of you know what that means with credit cards and the situations that you may have um, in your own life. An arrangement in which customers agree to buy now and pay later for their products is the, is the definition of credit. So this bigger economic picture in America is kind of a, a a pretty bad situation. One of the one of the basic problems is that industries are going to have a big tri big problem um, during this time period. And, and the basic industries that we've talked about lately, like the railroads and textiles and steel, their steel industry are barely going to be able to make any kind of profit. And that's going to be a huge issue. Um, also, mining and lumbering is also going to be, there's not going to be a real high demand 
for that because uh, production is going to go down. More people are not being able to buy food, or sorry, buy buy uh, houses and build houses, and so mining and um, lumber are going to be in a lower demand. And the automobile construction business and consumer goods is going to be really weak from from about oh 1928 on until we have the the um, the stock market crash in October of 1929. This is a, a picture from your textbook that shows Hastings, Nebraska, and basically what's happening here is people are having to auction off their their farm equipment to try and make money to pay back the loans um, that they had, and they just weren't able to make enough profit to be able to pay for the stuff that they bought, mostly on credit back then. So during that bad time, the farmers are going to need a, a help. So what's going to happen is, um, if you look at over here on the right-hand side, farmers' income is going to drop from 1919 um, 19 to 1921 from 10 billion total to 4 billion total, and it's going to drop to where you um, you have a lot less profit for farmers. And so the federal price supports. Here's what's going to happen with that the federal government comes in and says okay here's what we're going to do we're going to set a price for wheat corn and cotton and tobacco and other products of that similar kind of idea and the government would buy the the surplus which is the extra crops that the farmers were were creating at a guaranteed price and then they were going to try and sell that on the world market so my question is to you is what are some of the problems that you think that would lead to um, what are some of the problems with this idea and I'll give you just a second to think about that, and then I'm going to discuss it. So here's one of the big problems, is that if you are buying the surplus and trying to sell it on the world market, and you're guaranteeing a price, that money, the, the government, usually is not going to be able to make any profit. So they're basically wasting the money that they're, that they're spending on those crops because the world market isn't any better at this time either so what they're trying to do is trying to to help the farmer out by giving them money but in turn it's actually hurting the government and it's it's basically taking money away from our government that could have been um, used in other ways okay so, so to kind of wrap up this first part of of chapter fourteen we're going to talk about how there was an uneven distribution of income, and what that means is basically that the richer were, the rich were getting richer, and the poor were getting poorer. The income of the wealthiest one percent, so the the top one percent of Americans, had had basically increased by seventy five percent, and that's that's a big jump, um, and this is in, during the nineteen twenties. So the rich were getting a lot lot richer. On the other hand, more than 70% of the nation's families earn less than $2,500 a year, which is not um, a very solid income, and this meant that basically 70% of the population couldn't afford to buy the manufactured goods that companies were producing. So you had, you know, roughly 30% of the total population could afford to buy some of the things that were being produced, you know, like refrigerators and automobiles and, um, things that ran off electricity. So those things, what's going to happen is that over time people aren't going to be able to afford to buy those things and they're being made and they're not being sold and that's going to really hurt the companies that are trying to sell the stuff that they're making. So um, if you look at the little pie graph over on the left you can see that 65 percent and and basically 65 percent of the country made under two thousand dollars a year. So, and, and when you look at the, the $10,000 and over, that doesn't seem like a whole lot of money. Uh, that's only 1% of the population in America were, was making more than 100, I'm sorry, more than $10,000 a year. So these problems are going to continue to snowball, and we're going to talk more about this stuff as we move through, but they're going to continue to be an issue all the way up till October of 1929 when the bottom is going to fall out of our economy and it's basically going to be a huge economic disaster that's going to take um, decades to overcome in terms of being able to get out of the situation that we're in. So we'll talk more next time about the uh, stock market crash um, 
of Oct in October of 1929, but that's going to give you basically the beginnings of the problems that America was in um, between the, the Roaring Twenties and into the Great Depression.